All right. So for our next talk, we have Snap Arcade. Right. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be back. Uh, this is a project that has had a lot of developers. It was inspired by Bernard's uh, project, I guess, a couple of years ago, Bernard at a full size arcade. And I think, uh, did he bring it to the to the conference? I, John Maloney said I he thought he did. Well, anyway, we thought it was a fantastic project. We had a lot of help from Bernard and others, but what we've uh, been able oh, to- is. Pardon? For not showing it on his camera. Oh yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's what inspired this project. And we thought it was such a good idea that we, we wanted to have uh, our students be able to do this. And so uh, we worked with John Maloney uh, to build a connection that will let us write. Our students uh, already had a project where it was very popular where they, they would make a video game. And we have used a thread on the SNAP forum. Uh, it's often a, a, a culminating project at the end of the semester. And they post their video games that they make in SNAP on the SNAP forum. But now we're offering the opportunity if they want to go a little further to take the video games that they created in SNAP and combine them uh, with uh, a joystick and a micro and buttons uh, to, to create an arcade game, a snap arcade. And the, the glue that connects us together, connects the hardware to snap is uh, of course, micro blocks, uh, which uh, we had a lot of help from both John Maloney, Embernot and others uh, to, to get it to this point. Uh, we have on uh, John Maloney's website a wiki that has a link to all all the documentation as well as as uh, the thread on the SNAP forum about the arcade that will trace all the twists and turns of getting here. Rachel Gibson is going to do a quick demonstration of the uh, arcade just so you can kind of see. This is just one game. Here we go. This is just one game, uh, and you'll see a video with a different game in a moment. You good? Yeah. So you can show them. Okay, so that, and as you can see, uh, there's very little lag between the time the joystick moves and the movement. Uh, we've, we've uh, this was done, uh, the inspiration for a workshop by the International Technology and uh, Engineering Education Association. This summer, they held a workshop uh, for 15 elementary teachers at Savannah College in Savannah, Georgia. None of the teachers had coded before or used SNAP, and they were all successful in the, by the end of the two-week workshop in building a SNAP arcade. One of the teachers said she had never dreamed that she would be able to make a video game, and now she feels like she could design her own, uh, her own game system. Uh, we also had this summer an art, uh, a, a high school intern, Austin, who worked with Rachel, and we have a short video of his experience. Hi, I'm Austin. I'm a senior at Fluvanna County High School, and over the summer I was working an internship here at the Make to Learn Lab at UVA. With them, I created a control bar for a Snap Arcade. For my Snap Arcade, I created a game, Asteroids, which is very similar to the old school game with the same name. As you see, the joystick controls all four directions of movement and can move diagonally as well. Each of these buttons controls the direction of the shot of the lasers. And once it hits, when an asteroid is hit, the score, as you see on the top left, will increase. But when the ship is hit, as you see on the top right, its number of lives go down. And very quickly there, you saw that after three lives, the game is over. But so, uh, so anyway, uh, we, we find that uh, 
students are very engaged by this. The magic that makes this work is something for not developed, uh, which is a key and mouse library for microblocks. And essentially, it works like a makey makey. Uh, we're using, uh, can, Rachel, can you move the camera over a little bit so they can see uh, oh, yeah. the, pardon, the, the, or we'll just, yeah. So that we're using a Raspberry Pi Pico. The uh, version we use costs $5. There's another version that has wi Wi Fi on it that costs $7. And so this has just been a fantastic project, but we're running microblocks with Bernat's uh, key and mouse library on the little Pico. And then that connects to a Raspberry Pi in the, in the back. Um, and so we've done this since then in lots of other configurations and other, other Linux boards, single board computers and so on. We're gonna turn it over to John, who's gonna tell you a little bit about how all this works on the microbox side now. Great. Um, yeah, let me share my screen here. And uh, by the way, this keyboard and mouse library um, that you're going to see is the same sort of magic library that Bernat used for his really cool uh, meta programming demo that he did the other day. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch microblocks and I'll click the plus to add a new library. And under other is the keyboard and mouse library. And you'll see it has it has some commands to uh, to do stuff with keys. It also has some commands to do stuff with the mouse. I won't be talking about these, but Bernard made use of that yesterday when he had the, uh, his computer take over <laughs> and start programming itself. Um, so the simplest thing that you can do is uh, is to use the press key event. So I'm going to make a couple of little scripts. I'm going to say when the A button is pressed, I want to send a left arrow and i'll duplicate that and say that when the b arrow, uh, b button is pressed i'll send a right arrow and um, i have to connect uh, to my board i'm using let me show you uh, i'm using this thing called the pico ed board it has the same chip as the board that uh, that glenn showed um, but it has two buttons so it makes it a little easier because it has built-in buttons uh, so let me connect to that board, um, and uh, so now I have these buttons that can kind of send uh, send things. Um, and if I had if I had some text like right here, uh, if I press the left button, you see the cursor going to the left, and if I press the right button, uh, it goes to the right. Um, by the way, you can also send whole strings of, of characters. So, uh, so I have a little script here that um, uh, I wrote. A, I wrote a function. Let's just take a quick look at that function. Uh, show block definition. So all this does is it splits the the string s into its individual characters and does a press key for each character. Uh, I, I have this little test script here. I, I'm waiting three seconds before doing this, which will give me time. I'm going to click this, and I'm going to quickly click up here to select this text window. And uh, wait, it didn't seem to be running this. Run, click up here, and there we go. Um, so it it's basically sending all those characters one after another, and that's how Bernard got some of his uh, text output yesterday. Um, so let's see how we would connect that to Snap. Uh, so let me make a Snap uh, project here. Run Snap. And uh, let's just do the simplest thing. Let's just make the sprite move left and right when we get those uh, arrow keys. So when I get a, uh, a left arrow, I'll, uh, I'll change x by uh, minus 10, because I want it to go to the left and duplicate all of that oops backwards from what i expected micro blocks let's change it to be right arrow and go by 10 in that case um, and so uh, micro blocks is still running here so uh, so if i just push these buttons you can see i'm controlling that sprite so that's really cool but now i want to make a game where i'm driving the sprite around so uh, here's 
uh, here's the kind of uh, loop I might use to do that. So here's a forever loop and it says uh, just continuously, if the left arrow is pressed, I'm gonna move a couple of steps. If the right arrow is pressed, I'm gonna turn a little bit and I just wanna do that continuously. And let's see if that works with my current microblock scripts. Well, oh, actually I should disable, I throw these away to make sure they're not interfering, but it's, it's hardly doing anything at all. I mean, sometimes it moves. If I hold the button down, I, I would expect it to spin, but it's not, it's not doing anything. So why is that? What's the problem here? Well, the problem is that, uh, 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 the way, uh, a keyboard communicates to any computer is through, um, events that say that a key has gone up and a key has gone down and the, the microblocks program, uh, uh, the, the library that we're using for that, the press key event sends both a key down and then immediately a key up event. So most of the time, Snap doesn't think the key is down for any appreciable length of time. So those tests is the key down uh, usually are false. So what we want to do is we want to replace these, throw these away and replace them with some scripts that, um, uh, that actually send uh, continuous uh, send a key down event and then wait until the button has gone up and send a key up event. So let me drag in such a script. Oh, it's down here. Um, so here's, this says when the button A is pressed, I'm going to, um, I'm going to send the left arrow. That's the key code 216. Um, and then I'm going to wait until the button is re released. So I'm waiting until not button A and then send the release key. So notice I'm using these two commands, uh, uh, hold key and release key as opposed to press key. So these sort of separate this, the mouse down and the mouse up, I mean, sorry, the key down and the key up event uh, from, they, it doesn't send both at once. It sends just the down, waits until the button goes up and then sends the up. So let me duplicate this uh, whole thing. And, um, and modify it a little bit. So I'll make this be a uh, right arrow instead of left arrow. Oops. Right arrow. Um, I'll change this to be button B. I'll change this to be also button B. Okay. And let me just uh, press these. And so one thing is I noticed that if I hold this button down, the script keeps running until I release the, the, the button. So that's the B button. This is the A button. So that looks good. Let's see how it looks in Snap. Uh, so I've, this program is still running. Let's see what happens. Great. So I'm holding the button down. The, uh, the, the sprite is moving. If I hold this one down, it turns. So I can basically drive around um, by, by pushing these buttons in various combinations. I can even hold them both down at, at the same time, and it goes in a circle. Uh, so that's the essence of mouse and keyboard control. It basically is you are uh, using microblocks to emulate a keyboard um, or a mouse if you want to go farther like Bernat did. Um, and uh, the snap code is just, it, it would work the same if I pressed the left and, I'm pressing the left and right arrows on my keyboard. So it works exactly the same as the keyboard, which means you can test it with snap first before you connect up your, your button and joystick control panel in an arcade game. You can basically test it just with key commands. Uh, and then once you hook it up, it just works. Uh, so that's the beauty of this. It's very, very simple. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not like complicated communication. It's just keyboard events. That's, that's exactly how our students use it. Uh, testing in advance? Well, well, no, they, we don't even tell them about microcontrollers until they develop their games. And then oh, they, right. They, and they, 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 they just use the keyboard arrows and so on when they're developing their games. But then once they have them working, we say, oh, would you like to do use a microcontroller? And so they're usually delighted how easily they can add it. So on our wiki, we have a, a snap section. And uh, yesterday, uh, I pointed at this article about the Snap Bridge that explains how to how to communicate with messages. Um, we now have this article um, about the Snap Arcade, and it basically it just has a little uh, quick sort of explanation of what it is. 
uh, along with a pointer to the uh, web page that Glenn showed earlier on their educational manufacturing um, website, which is a new website that he's developing as part of an NSF grant. Uh, but I really like this quote. Um, this is from a teacher who hadn't used, hadn't done any programming before. My arcade control bar was a success. I had a wow moment because who would have thought in a million years that I was going to create a game control for an arcade? I feel like I can invent an I can invent a new gaming system now. So I, I think you know this is the kind of uh, excitement that we we hope to inspire in in both teachers, and then that they can can, can sort of inspire their students to have that same excitement and sense of empowerment. Um, uh, I'm going to stop sharing unless uh, there's questions. Somebody wants to see something. Anyone? Okay. I'll turn it back over to you, Glenn. Well, I, I just uh, I want to mention that the Pac-Man game that we displayed initially was done by a student in our class, but as usual, uh, the SNAP community jumped in, and there were several improvements to that game that were contributed by by uh, I think some teenagers uh, who are very talented and and made some improvements that that, that made it brought it to the level that you see now. And if you just uh, search on that, uh, you can find the Pac-Man project as well in the SNAP forum. Thank you guys for, uh, you're just an incredible community, uh, which I think is the most important, for us, the most important part of SNAP is not just the language, but the community around it, so. Um, Glenn, um, uh, what, have have you you've done this with your UVA class? Have has anybody done it with uh, you know uh, K twelve students? Oh yeah, we've done we've done it with the middle school students and high school students. Wow. And what was the reaction? Oh, they love. I mean, you know, they don't want to do their other. Uh, what they say is that they procrastinate and avoid doing their other projects by working on this. <laughs> love to hear that yeah that's a, i think that's the definition of a really great project if, if they use it as an excuse not to do their other work that they school work that they don't like as much yep uh, and that's what engagement looks like <laughs> right that's wonderful to see that snap has such a it's so empowering um so uh, Simon Monk ha has a question or a statement. I'm not sure. For an arcade game, I think it's better to make a full screen stage mode. And actually, you are using full screen stage mode for the for the game, and you also had to uh, make it so that the Raspberry Pi could display Snap full screen without any menu bar or anything. Um, but yeah. managed to get all that we working. We got a lot of help from Bruno. I will say that we originally had it working on a Raspberry Pi 3, and then they upgraded the Raspberry Pi 3 operating system and broke the screen rotate feature. And so then we migrated to the 4 because that seemed like it was getting more love from the Raspberry Pi folks, and the screen rotate worked properly there. But but if they ever fixed the bug in screen row height, it was fast enough that it would run fine on a Raspberry Pi 3. It's probably, and, and also on other little single board Unix computers that, uh, Linux computers that cost 30 or $40. So it, it's, you know, we were once talking about one laptop per child. Here you've got actually a, a computer and a microcontroller that, for each child. Yeah, how much would you say, like, you know, how much w do all the components cost, not including the stuff that you'd fabricate yourself, like the the, the case for well, it? Right now, the one thing that we haven't found is a good low cost. The screen was about $60. And so the whole thing, that drives the cost of the whole thing about $100. But I know there are less expensive screens out there. We just haven't sourced a good one yet that, that's the, the screen is overkill because it has touch and a bunch of other stuff we don't use. Oh, I you see. You probably do one for maybe $60 if you got the component cost to a minimum. Yeah, that, I mean, that's great. That's that's the kind of cost that like a school could afford to do, maybe. So we've certainly come a long way. I never dreamed that you could have these little 
Uh, we built the cabinet uh, in two ways. One class, we used a laser cutter. Uh, we, we, we used the laser cutter, uh, but other classes just use uh, a coping saw. Uh, so, and uh, we think there's uh, a lot of other form factors. We want to do a handheld version, which would be, I think, quite feasible. So, okay, well, if you guys uh, in, in uh, Europe want to try it, I guess, I guess you, can, you can try Bernat's full-size version. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to discuss this project on the SNAP forum. So you can meet us there if you want to follow up with questions. Uh, in the, just look, search on the SNAP Arcade thread. Thank you, guys.